Yeah. We the best uh, around. Uh, we designated straight as live every week. Designated homie, cause we stick to heat. We designated straight as the peak. Talking Yankee baseball, hip hop or the streets. Yeah. We designated, yeah. we innovative. Yeah. We designated, spit is time, let you know. Yeah. We designated, yeah. we innovative. Yeah. We designated, spit is let's start the show. going on everybody and welcome to the one the only designated spitters and i tell you what man this this to me it's a good one right here it's a great one because i got mr recaps here himself Derek, what's going on fam i'm loving this is gonna be a great episode when we went on my channel we had like 200 people subscribe so hit that subscribe button yeah. to nyy news tv uh people people called us like the 92 dream team <laughs> i feel it i'm feeling it you know, it, it's so much fun doing stuff like this um, when, you know, obviously when my game seasons end, I'm subscribed to you too. So when I leave the game, I'm like, oh yeah, recap time. It's like Derek's right. time. It's so cool, man, that like, you know, game season have, has come along so far Then you're the, you're the master of the recaps. I mean, I just, I always said it. I, I've told you this personally off the air that... I feel like your show is so friggin' well done. It's just a fun watch. I try to make it fun. I try and keep it polished. I mean, I, I try and think about, you know, YouTube's a visual platform. So, right. you know, lots of pattern changes, lots of highlights, things going on. You know, I never claim that I know more about the Yankees or baseball than anybody else. I just try and, you know, create like a fun half an hour after the game or yeah. a miserable half an hour if they lose because <laughs> misery loves company. I'll tell you what, lo losses, bad losses a lot of times – do Get better more. than like great wins. Yeah, no, no doubt Weird. about it. It's it's funny because people even ask me about that. Like you've you've told this to me too. You're like, oh, your rants are great. It's like the thing I hate doing the most. I do Same not here. like. I hate doing any type of rant, but they kill. Everybody's like, yes, Pete, yeah. please rant. We got to hear this, and I'm like, oh, I really don't want to. But again, at the end of the day, we are fans of this club. We love the New York Yankees, and you know, um, sometimes our our emotions kind of just, for me personally, the emotion just comes out of me. So it is a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure to have you on today. And we got a little bit to talk about, right? Um, You know, free agency is here. Aaron Judge, of course, is the big name. So just off the top, I want to get your feelings. What are your initial early thoughts on what could potentially happen with Aaron Judge? And if you're concerned at all about a return. Yeah. I'm definitely concerned. Uh, you know, he's playing it so well. He's playing it so close to the vest. He's doing exactly, you know, like he does everywhere else in life, textbook handling it well. You yeah. know, he's not giving away too much because, really, if he makes the Yankees sweat it out a little bit, that could be an extra 50, 100 million. You never know. He might, you know, he might be planning to come back to the Yankees. Who wants to move across the country, right? The Yankees right, are on right. the verge of going back to the World Series. He's got a chance to be a legend in New York. He's already on legend status because of the, the 62 home runs, but you win a championship and add on to that. I mean, you're up there with the greats of all time, probably getting 99 in Monument Park. That's got to be appealing. And as much as, you know, you want to play for your hometown team in, in, in San Francisco, look, uh, the Yankees are a better organization in terms yeah. of consistent winning. So, yeah. you know, I, I think he's going to come back. Yeah, I think it's I think it's very very interesting because you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Nobody truly knows what Aaron Judge is thinking. Nobody knows if Aaron Judge has that same Jeter mindset from that interview where it's like, "Hey, I I want to come back. It is where I want to be." And you mentioned the lore of the Yankees. You think he gets that C if he comes back? I think I think you have to. I think that that'll probably be part of the pitch. You know, um, Hal Steinbrenner has said that he's talked to Judge a couple of times, yeah. and that they were very positive. And you only get, like, the owner involved in negotiations if it's, like, you know, your premier guy. And Correct. if I'm Hal, this is what this is the way I'm pitching it. You know, come back. I'll, I'll pull every string I got in the business to make sure you get as much in endorsements as possible on top of your contract. I'll give you that captaincy, you know, and then you play out your career. You're getting a number in Monument Park. You'll be an all-time legend. No other city can give you – you know, the, the Monument Park experience like the Yankees have. Yeah, that, that's a that's absolutely a great point. And for me, <clears throat> when I just think about it too, like for Aaron Judge to come back to the New York Yankees, 
where where else are you going to get truly at the end of the day, like you just said, that package that the Yankees could offer you? The Giants aren't going to be able to do that. Now, the Giants can always say, you know, we, we've, we've had many times of having a great slugger on the team, a Barry Bonds-esque type guy. You're the clo- you are a giant for the Giants. So there, there's many ways that I can see them positioning that too. And at the end of the day, you know, a lot of things always come down to money. It always comes down to, there was an article today I was reading and it basically said, you know, a lot of times it's, the agents look more for that extra year because that's what fills their pockets a little more. Right. And there's rumors early, and rumors are rumors. We don't really know of the Giants maybe going to nine or ten years, not knowing if the Yankees would do something like that. But I want to bring up something that you mentioned about Hal Steinberg because I personally believe, and I was told this actually last offseason before they started negotiations, that Steinberg is actually a very big fan of Aaron Judge and he wants him back. That's why you didn't see the Correa chase and all these other chases. I think he's going to actually be very directly involved in this conversation of bringing Judge back. Because look, one of the negatives, unfairly, by the way, I'm going to say unfairly, maybe you think differently on this one, to Hal Steinbrenner is one, that he doesn't spend enough money, and two, that all he worries about is the bottom line. Well, he's a businessman. He's going to. That's kind of how it works. And losing Aaron Judge would really hurt his pocket, so... I don't think he needs that. He wants that to happen at all. Yeah, I, I mentioned this the other day that there are times in when you run a baseball team when you make the baseball move. You know, you go out yeah. and get the pitcher at the deadline. You know, you sign this guy to put some butts in the seats. And for a lot of teams, bringing in Aaron Judge would be a nice baseball move. But for the Yankees, it's also a business move. That's right. And they're one of the biggest sports franchises in the world. And it would be an embarrassment, an mm. embarrassment if he leaves them. You know, that, that also makes you question, you know, what other free agents are going to think. You know, if their best player is leaving the year after they get to the ALCS, after he pro- presumably gets offered $300-plus million, mm-hmm. turning down that kind of money, what, what is it about New York that he doesn't like? Right. So it, it would not reflect well on the brand if he signs elsewhere. Now, Hal Steinbrenner, he said multiple times, that, that he really loves Aaron Judge yeah. as a player. And his dad, on occasion, when he really felt strongly about a player, would pick up the phone. And, and, and you know, he, he you know, uh, Gary Sheffield, he called yeah. Gary Sheffield's dad and negotiated with him personally. Um, I'm trying to think. Bernie Williams, I think, was the final, the final call came from Steinbrenner. He picked yeah. up a pay phone outside of his club in Tampa and called Bernie directly and said, look, we – Come, come back. And, you know, he ended up taking less money because uh, Steinbrenner was able to persuade him with all this, you know, post-Yankees career stuff. We'll let you yep. play. Take me out to the ball game in center field on your little guitar or whatnot. We'll help yep. you run your music career, whatever. I, I think I think Hal needs to do something like that. Just, just kind of reach deep from within those Steinbrenner genes and pull out that persuasiveness that he may or may not have. Yeah, and, and for me, at the end of the day, I, somebody asked me this yesterday during my hot stove show, and they were like, you know, Pete, what do you what do you really think? And I said, you know what, I just can't see the Yankees not bringing Judge back. I don't know how they how they make it work. I, I think it's such a valuable part to their business. Forget the on the play stuff, you know, on the field stuff. We know what that's going to look like, but at the end of the day, for a purely business move, it makes all the sense in the world to pull out everything you got to pull out to get Aaron Judge to come back. Um. To, to your organization, it's extremely important to them. And I mean, in the long run, it's going to be a lot of money, but you know that. I mean, it's you, that's why parking costs what it does. I mean, yep. you, you find you find a way to pay for it, and of you course. just swallow the last couple of years of the deal if you have to, and you say, "Hey, look, we're going to be taking on an albatross. Let's try and arrange our roster so that we have some contracts coming off the book around that yeah. time." And that's that's you have to build around Judge. Right, and that's one of the great things. Actually, what I want to get into next, because I, I, I'm, a, I'm assuming, I don't know if, my assumption here, and I guess what, how well play this going forward, is that Aaron Judge eventually does come back. I mean, I think it's not a, not set in stone. It's Nothing's guaranteed here. We know that. But for a Yankee business standpoint, I'm going to assume that potentially they, they, they do bring Judge back. You just mentioned something great. You said, you know, building around that. One of the great things the Yankees have is that they have young guys right at the cusp. They're basically right there, and that is cost-effective. You got your Cabrera, you got your Peraza, you got your Anthony Volpe. Guys like Austin Wells, these other guys are are fairly close to being able to contribute at this level. When you look at that and what the Yankees have, 
what you say, okay, we bring Aaron Judge back for this Albatross, this gigantic contract. We want to get a little cost effective, but be much better than we were last year. What is the first thoughts of the moves that pop in your head that they have to do? Well, Cashman already mentioned that the middle of the infield is going to be decided by the young guys. Uh, and, and in my blueprint, I go with Peraza at shortstop. And like we've talked about before, yeah. I send Volpe down to play second base for a couple of months, get used to it. To me, I look at Volpe and I see a young Dustin Pedroia. Mm. You know, same, same type of body type, same type of big swing, but the bat stays in the zone for a long time. I don't know if you ever noticed how big a bat Anthony Volpe swings. Yeah, yeah, an yeah. enormous, enormous barrel, but he ends up keeping it in the zone for a long time, yep. just like Pedroia did. I think you can take two really valuable positions right there and go with the league minimum salary, essentially, right? That helps yep. you cut costs. Now, you're stuck paying for Donaldson. Nobody's going to take that $25 yeah. million, But I don't think he should be the third baseman. I think I think I would go with Oswaldo Cabrera at, your, at, at third base and just go with a youth infield. I mean, that's what I would do. Bring back Ben Benintendi, bring back Judge, and sign another pitcher or two. Maybe get um, Andrew Chafin for the bullpen. Maybe get um, uh, Rodon, Carlos Rodon, oh. for the rotation. Maybe even – let me ask you – I'm, I'm interested to hear your perspective on yeah. this because I go back and forth. Justin Verlander, would you give him an extra year or two just here's, to get him away from the Astros? I, I tell you what, here's my concern about Justin Verlander. I don't know why I feel this way. I feel like the Yankees get Justin Verlander. It becomes old man Verlander. <laughs> yes. Randy Johnson yes, part two. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and that is like, I, I mentioned this earlier. I'm like, this is the year Cashman goes out there and even gets like, um, what's his name on the Astros? Uh, Brantley? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is the end of the year. He ends up going on left field. We got him at a cheap cost, and he's the worst player in the league. Like, oh, right. my God, too late. But I can almost feel the same way about Verlander. Now, I'll tell you this right now. If the Yankees went out there and made that move, I'm not going to knock it. I'm not going to say, ah, it's probably a year. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm okay with this. Now, if it bites you in the butt, then it bites you in the butt. It is what it is. But outside looking in, it's not a. it wouldn't be a bad idea. It's a swing. I want them throwing punches this year. I don't want them sitting I agree. back and trying to rope-a-dope the league and trying – you know, win by being too smart. Exactly. Yeah. There, that to me, that's a swing. That's that's taking your the ace of your top competitor and saying, you know what, we'll pay you to join us, and if you fall off, oh well. Yeah. Not, oh well. That's right. Anymore, you know. Uh, to me, I you know, it's like my coaches always used to say: if you get thrown out trying to take the extra base, so what? Yeah. But I don't. I don't want you jogging. You know. To right. me, that's a move where you're going hard. You're trying to win. No doubt. Uh, I like it. I like Verlander. Yeah, personally, I would go with Rodon. But oh my god, me too. It, but, but he's a swing but, too, in a sense, when it comes to the injury sense. You know, there's a yeah. little bit, there's there's a little iffiness there too. But man, is he phenomenal? I mean, him and Judge at the top of rotation. I mean, him and uh, Cole. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you could I mean, you could look at two guys of potentially well over 400 plus strikeouts. And take a look at this. I mean, you got Cole righty, Rodon lefty, yep. Cortez lefty, Severino righty, yep. and then you number five. I guess you, you go with Montas. You go with. Uh, uh, Herman, you know, I, 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 I would deal. I would deal Montas. Okay. Oh, there it is! <laughs> there it is! You answered it for. I was gonna say, let me ask you something here because I just talked about this on my hot stove. Which I was like, do you deal if something comes along and it seems like, hey, you know, Frankie Montas might look good over here? Do you like, yeah, Anything. let's make that deal. Anything. I mean, so look, I just get a, I just get a feeling, you know, like me I do. There's a certain uh, je ne sais quoi that he does not have to be. Uh, a Yankee. I mean, I got the same feeling with Jeff Weaver. I get the same thing with uh, who's that stiff they just traded, uh, Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray. That same that same yeah. kind of lack of guts, where you yeah. give up a home run and you see the deer in headlights look. Yep. Yep. And and look, you mentioned it. I noticed you talked about this on your show a couple of times. His numbers outside of horrible. Oakland. You mentioned this even before the trade too. Yeah. Yeah. His his numbers outside of Oakland were horrible. I wrote it off as an anomaly. I was dead wrong. He is trash. I don't want here's him on the team. Yeah, no, but here's the thing. People people got to understand this about Oakland Coliseum. You already know this. You're a very smart baseball guy. You get so many extra outs. Valtteri you Gros. get so many extra outs. And they also got a gigantic outfield. So That's if true. you're a ground ball guy, you should do very well there unless you start getting smacked around. Because even hard hit fly balls may be outs. But then again, you get a lot of foul balls. You jam guys. You get a lot of extra outs. In Oakland. Now, here's the thing about Montas. I also mentioned this recently. If he comes back and they say, you know what? 
I think he does because one thing about Brian Cashman is he doesn't like to admit mistakes that quickly. That's him basically right. saying every move I made wasn't good. None of them worked. Um, I wish he would co- not come out and admit it, but by his action show, we want to go a different direction. We don't feel this worked, and we want to nip it in the butt very quick. For me, when I watch Montas pitch, I look at him and I go, you know what? I feel like this guy just tries to allow too much contact. If he just goes more to that four-seam slider change-up, I want to be more of a Severino type, I feel there'd be a little more success there. He just reminds me of a guy that's a little too much. I want him to put the ball in play and get out. Let me, let, me try to, let me try to get this ball over the plate. So many times he got hit, it was on counts where he's behind the count, and then he throws the sinker from the outside and drops right over the plate. And it yeah. would just get smacked. I think that just the consistency of his breaking stuff, which we hear about how great his breaking stuff is. But the problem is his great ones are great, but he hangs too many of them. I Way mean, too it, much. I mean, if you, if you hang three out of every 10 breaking pitches, you don't have a good breaking ball. I don't That's care right. if the other seven are nasty. You're, right. you're just, it's just consistency. And you know, when you have the breaking balls that hang, that's three run homers to me. Yep. You know, especially when you're not pounding the zone and he doesn't pound the zone as much because he's trying to get the strikeouts with the splitter. That's that's a pitch people can lay off up. I, I I don't know. He's just difficult to watch. He's difficult to size up. I just get a feeling with him that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, and I guess you know he could kind of be hidden if he's your fifth starter, but nobody's going to forget that that was the big acquisition. You know, yeah. a year before. So there do there does. You know, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to see it, it does come with an expectation for him. And you I got know, a funny fans trade. aren't going to let him off easy. How about how about Montas and Donaldson back to uh, Minnesota for Geo? Hey, <laughs> sign me up. Trade. I, I would take that, that in an absolute heartbeat. Yeah. Um, you know, there is one thing that I, I might disagree a little bit on you. I know you mentioned that you think Donaldson has no way to move him. I don't know about that, to be honest. I think there is a way to figure it out. Now, here's my main concern. If I look at it for some reason, I don't see Brian Cashman doing that that type of trade. And if he does do it, you have to be very creative. And Brian Cashman, in my opinion, has not been the most creative GM of all. We've seen guys with large, giant contracts get moved. We've seen Boston ship off like $190 plus million plus of contracts now. These guys weren't Josh Donaldson. Don't get me wrong. They weren't as bad as Donaldson. It was still somewhat in their prime of their careers. I just feel like in a sense with Donaldson, there was just something to him all year. I almost feel like he's a guy that if you want to move forward, you just got to have him off the team. And I don't know if that's their thought process also, but like you even said too, you know, even if he's on the team, I'm like, even though his glove was very good, bro, I'll be honest, I'd rather I can't play third base at this point. Yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, to me, it's just the approach at the plate. I mean, he's just got such a whale and bail approach, and the Yankees yes. need to go in the opposite direction of that, especially with the shift going away next year, where where contact is going to be much more important than it's been That's the right. last few years. You don't need to hit it over the shift anymore because there is no shift. That's right. Now maybe now maybe they think that Josh Donaldson can make the adjustment. We've seen them try and coach guys up and and change things, but he's at the point in his career. I don't think he's going to be making a lot of changes no. to his game. And if they do, I don't think he's at the point physically where they would have a lot of effect because, you know, he might get hurt if he changes things up a little bit. The muscle memory is so much different now. I just think that um, the best path forward is to try and find somebody to take, you know, $5 million of his contract yeah. to put a name in the in the seats or yeah. to put a name in the lineup and, and, and maybe ship with a, a medium prospect just to make it palatable. Correct. And just get the roster spot back. That's Ex- all. That's exactly. What I At the end of the day, he's clogging up a roster spot. And the good thing is, we we have to, to give Brian Cashman a little bit of credit here on certain things. He has started, I think, to rec- recognize we need that contact in this lineup. So I did. He, he said, and he's right. I did go out there and get Benetton because I recognize that. True. He is right about that, and and you know you can't deny that. It's not his fault that Benetton got hurt. He got hurt. He was a free agent. It was a smart trade. It, it, it Me and my team were talking about when I had, we goes, wow, he finally made the obvious move. <laughs> and we're like, good. That's a really good, obvious Yankee move. And he made it. Ben Attendee was the right guy. Now the question comes, is he going to get into a bidding war over Andrew Ben Attendee? Is he going to go up to 14, 15, 16 million? I had somebody the other day go, he's going to get 9 million a year. I said, you're out of your mind. No. There's no so- way. 
I don't have a lot of sources, but I, I do have a couple. And somebody told me that Ben Intendi's agent is looking for six years, hundred plus. Yeah, which would, which would be about about sixteen point seven million mm-hmm. per year. To me, that's the limit. I mean, that's a yeah. that's a that's a lot. He's twenty nine years old next year. You signed him to that contract. You're are, you're blocking uh, Dominguez probably. You got Bader yeah. in center field. You block a corner spot. A lot of people think uh, Dominguez has to switch over. So ew, I don't know if I would go. I don't know if I'd go hundred plus million for him. I think if it gets to that point, maybe you take a look at that Japanese guy. Uh, Yoshida. His name Yoshida. Yoshida. Yoshida yeah. I think he had something like 42 strikeouts. And yeah, he walks. does have 42 strikeouts, 80-something walks, hits 330-something two times. He's won the bat in title there. Um, not a ton of pop. Uh, the one thing I, I've heard about him, which which is actually pretty interesting, I actually had a – when I put my report out about him on my hot stove show, somebody that watches all these guys in Japan messaged me, and he was like, he does have a long swing, you're right, but somehow he still hits the guys throwing 95, 96, 97, 98. He's like, and I'm yeah. talking like he stings the ball. Even though he got that, he's able to. His timing is very quick. So I, I think all of these guys at the end of the day are risk, no matter who you bring in. But the thing about Ben Attendee that I think you also got to think of if you're a Yankee fan, you mentioned that it does block a little, it, it blocks Dominguez a little bit. So I think for the Yankees, you kind of got to sit back too if it gets to that level and that, that amount of money. Do we like Bader enough? Will we make him a long-term deal? Do we sign him to a five-year contract? Uh, is that something that we see in a Harrison Bader? Is he is he that type of guy that we lock in to go, hey, Dominguez, Everson Piera, one of you guys, that left field is probably going to be yours. And right. now it's open. So maybe they go out there and they, and they trade. I, know, I don't know if you saw my hot stove show, but there's the Arizona Diamondbacks got about five different guys that are left-handed outfields that they got to get rid of. One or yeah. two of them. There's a few good options there for the Yankees that even plug out there that really want to hurt. You look for the less strikeouts. You look for the more contact speed. And maybe they go that route. But I do think it's a question of if Ben Attendee does get that amount. By the way, I've been told that uh, Minnesota is is very hard after him. Uh, so after we'll ben see what after Ben Attendee. I could see that. So if it does get to that amount, you're talking 16 million a season, 17 mil a season. Do the Yankees then jump back and go, hey, look, we already got judging right. We really like Harrison Bader, and this deal might work out very well for us. We still feel there's a lot of pop, pop in that bat that we're kind of bringing forward. That left field is going to be for one of these other young guys to join your Peraza, Cabrera, or Volpe. Maybe, maybe that's the route the Yankees go. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be opposed uh, to signing Bader. I mean, he's the type of guy that you want to keep around. He seems like a, a hustle guy. Uh, he's a New Yorker. Uh, yep. He grew up a fan. He played well in the postseason, so you know he you know rises to the occasion. Defense first. He's got one of the best arms in baseball. People uh, don't realize that he's in the ninety first percentile yeah. in terms of the velocity on the arm, which you wouldn't think because he's got such like a you know he's kind of a, a smaller guy. He's always the yeah. long, the longer, lankier guys with the longer arms and mm-hmm. the big hands that throw you know like Judge who has the the arm, but uh, Bader he just uncorks laser beams. You know, I, I would not be opposed to signing Bader. I feel like they, you know, the, the mistake they made with Aaron Hicks extending him might might push them off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But he's a free agent after the season. Yep. And if you think that you might, you know, if you might lose him, then maybe you give him a deal, let's say, August. You know, uh, right. then, you know sign, him, sign him when he's got a couple of months left after you know, uh, you know a little bit more what he's going to give you. Yeah, definitely. No rush on that. Um, when you look at this Yankee infield, what are you thinking personally? Um, I think you bring back Rizzo, but if, if Rizzo doesn't come back, I think you got to go after somebody like uh, Abreu. Mm. Um, uh, second base, I would go with DJ for the first few months and then transition him back into that super utility role uh, for Volpe when he's ready, probably around Memorial Day. For me, Peraza is the opening day short, shortstop, no and I just, I just give him the keys and say, do your best. If you struggle, you struggle. You're going to be in there every day. Uh, and then third base, I'd probably go with right now IKF and then Donaldson in for late defense if you can't get rid of him. That's that's kind of how I would do it. I, I, I don't think you need to spend big on, on a Correa or a Turner. Yeah. I think I'd rather put that money towards Judge and pitching. Yeah. If Yeah. I, I like here's, here's my thing on that one. If the Yankees say we're going to get Judge and bring Rodon in, I don't give a poop about the infield anymore. I don't care. You put whoever you want there. But if the Yankees say we're getting judge and then we're going to look at that money maybe for a relief pitcher and a few other guys, 
I'd much rather them say, hey, look, man, put Correa on this team. I need a villain, Derek. I need yeah. a villain. <laughs> this team needs a villain. They need somebody while the team's looking like, I don't like this guy. I put him at third, yeah. If he's willing to play third, I'd take a look at it. Um, I know a lot I put of him people, at third. I know a lot of people are, are kind they're not fans of Correa because of the whole 2017 thing, but mm-hmm. it's like at this point, let bygones be bygones. Yeah. If the Yankees gotta win, they gotta stop, you know, they gotta stop looking at everything with how's it gonna affect the fan base morally. Let's spend Correct. some money. Let's get better. Okay. Correct. Yeah. I think, I, I think, you know, you, you're right. I mean, we, we kind of, we kind of hit it all on the head. Our, our man just won the platinum gold glove behind the plate. Trevino. I don't think he goes anywhere. I think Trevino is going to be the starter. Maybe they improve the backup a little bit, or maybe Rortvet finally gets that. I worry about Rortvet because he's so strong. Like he's so muscle bound. Like yeah. you don't see athletes that look like that. Do you, Gabe Kapler. I think he's still the manager of the, the Giants. Yeah, I don't know if you remember when he played. He was also on like all sorts of covers for like bodybuilding yep. magazines and stuff because he yep. was like that. But he also couldn't stay on the field. He couldn't, couldn't play every day because you get so muscle bound. Baseball is a game where you know you can be a little bit less athletic, but you got to be more mm-hmm. flexible. You know? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's all about it's, it. It truly is all about flexibility. You're right. Um, Rortvet is a he's a little tank. I remember when he came over, you saw him. You're like, yeah, this guy gonna stick behind catching for how long? It's like I don't know about that one. That's kind of a it's kind of a strenuous spot to be in there with all that muscle. He's one of those guys that, uh, as Ken Singleton used to say, turns the shower knob to where you can't turn it back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah. yeah. <laughs> facts, facts. So, yeah, I agree with you with Rizzo at first base. Um, the, one of the main reasons, too, there's a rumor out too that, that Rizzo wants like five plus years at a hundred or something million. I, I don't. If he even asked that, I think if I'm the Yankees too, I love Rizzo. Italian, I love him. I love Rizzo. Good luck. I to would you have to. Yeah, luck, I'd have to look at him and say, "Hey, my friend, <laughs> goodbye. See you later." I, you brought up you brought up Pantera, also known as Abreu, in uh, the White Sox. A lot of people don't like Abreu. I love him. Uh, to me, he's an RBI machine. He's a contact guy. Um, he's a professional hitter. I haven't looked at his numbers this year, so I have no idea what he did. But every time I watched him, he had good at bats. He still hits the ball hard. He, you know, he has line to line capability. You know, if you if you can get him on a one or two year deal, if Rizzo again, I want to preface this by saying Rizzo's top choice. If, yes, but if you're course. in that rock and hard place where you don't have a first baseman, I feel very comfortable with. A and break. you got to remember too, the prize of overseas is going to be posted next year. That's Murakami, and right. Mir- Murakami hit. He's the guy with 58 home runs, 761 slugging percentage, 21 years old. He'll be 22 when he comes over. And he's so, first baseman. And he's a first baseman, Murakami, yeah. And, and he wants to be, he literally is like all over the place saying it. He doesn't want to wait until 25 to be a free agent. He wants to come now because he wants to be the home run king. Oh. It is basically what he, he wants to be the home run king. He's an absolute animal. I mean, he's stocky, strong, pretty good at first base. Also plays third too. Plays first and third base at a pretty decent level. But um, again, lefty bat, uh, really. And you know the Yankees desperately want to dip their feet back into that Asian market. They, it's oh, yeah. it's a money-making machine. It really is. And, you know, you, you got a great recruitment tool in Hideki Matsui. That's you know, right. When, when, when he wears 55. Was, right. When Tanaka yeah. was over here uh, meeting with – you remember he was talking to the Cubs, he was talking to the Dodgers, talking to the Yankees, and there was this big sweet states. Where is he going to land? Where is he going to land? Yep. And then it ended up being Masahiro Tanaka – I mean, sorry, sorry. It ended up being uh, Matsui. Hideki Matsui yeah. that that pushed the um, that pushed the decision to the Yankees. Yep, no doubt about it, man. So there's a there's a lot of fun questions being asked now. One of the guys that we haven't spoke about a lot was a guy who made an impact last year. Do you agree with me when it comes to Oswaldo Cabrera that his most valuable position is to be able to play everywhere and not have a set spot? Well, I mean, that's probably where he's most valuable um, right now. The way that you know, everything is, is positioning. I would love to see him get more reps at third base just because mm. he can, you know, he can hit. He's got a left-handed bat. Um, that's a threat. But he looked damn good in the outfield, too, in right field yep. especially. Left field during the playoffs, I think that's more positioning than anything. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I mean, he's a damn good player. I, I don't want him taking reps away from the shortstop or the or the second baseman. I want those guys to develop. I want Volpe yeah. and Peraza to, to kind of get the keys and let them, you know, develop as a middle infield core for a decade, you know? Uh, but third base, outfield, 
you know, maybe teach him to play a little bit of first base too, you mm-hmm. know, something like that. I could see He was that, over there know. this year, wasn't he, at one point? I, I think it was an injury took, or something he went I think he there. took some reps. He might have he might have played two or three innings. Yeah. But, you know, play him over there in spring training where it doesn't matter and see how he right. does. You know, if you got the hands to play third base, you got the hands to play first base. Correct. Sorry. Correct. Correct. Um, so the last thing I just want to ask you about, uh, when it comes to – I, shortstop and second base is interesting. My, the way you set it up is the way I have it, too. I got Volpe at second base and Peraza at shortstop. So I'm assuming Glaber is traded. Oh, I think yeah, that's something, yeah. Yeah, I think that's something they revisit again and they move on from him. Yeah, uh, Cashman the other day, somebody asked, is Glaber Torres in your long-term plans? And he kind of did that Cashman answer. Well, nobody's yeah. in our long-term plans except for John <laughs> Carlos Stanton and Gary Cole. Right. Well, you know, that to me that says... At least it sends the message to Glaber that you're not in our long term plans, right? Uh, and look, and look, I've had I've had enough with uh, swinging from the heels down five runs in the ninth inning. I've had enough of not hustling down the line. At some point, you you know you got to um, you got to turn it up if you want to wear the yeah. pinstripes. And he just right. hasn't he hasn't done that to me. I, I agree with you one hundred and fifty percent, just about on on everything we talked about. So. Really, just to wrap it up, I'm going to ask you the one big question. Gun to your head today, is Aaron Judge a New York Yankee? I, I, I've been phrasing this slightly. I've been putting the same question to my my uh, guests, and I ask them, you know, if you're right, world peace is achieved, and if you're wrong, the entire world explodes. <laughs> no pressure. But I would say yes. I think he's going to come back just because yeah. of the whole business thing. You know, Hal Steinbrenner, you know, if he's been talking directly to him, he can say, hey, look, there's things that we can do that don't necessarily show up on the AAV mm-hmm. that that we have resources that maybe, you know, you want to be a part owner of a soccer team, Aaron? Come on, it's fun. Yeah, you, uh, you, know, know, that, yeah. that, you know, that type of thing. Uh, there's, there, you know, he could get so many more endorsements in New York than he could in San Francisco. You know, L.A. may be a different story, but he doesn't strike me as a movie star with that face. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> making a hit, but let's, 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 with or without the gap, it doesn't matter. No, still uh, doesn't get it. No, I mean, you know, he, he looks like he drank that um, that that nerve tonic that Ken Griffey Jr. had in uh, in, in uh, the Simpsons. No, I, I, I love Judge, and um, I want him to I want him to be out there in right field for another six or seven years, and then take yeah. over at DH and finish his career as a Yankee, as the maybe the Yankees' all time home run champion, other than Babe Ruth. Yeah. He, he could definitely do that. So, Derek, tell us a little about it. Anything new coming to NYY Recaps? So I'm going to be doing a morning show for the um, winter meetings uh, nice. where I'm going to have, have a different guest on. I'm hoping you're, you'll – I haven't asked you this yet, but I'm assuming that oh, I can on. get you on for one. So um, every day of the winter meeting is going to do a 90-minute you know, um, uh, show in the morning just to go over you know who's who's meeting with who, what the hottest rumors are of that that day, and just kind of you know BS and talk about whatever. Uh, and then um, I'm basically rebuilding everything for next year. My, I filled up my entire hard drive. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm starting over with a new hard drive, all new player reels, all new all new broadcast packages, trying to give it like that 4K, that, yeah. that, take that next step to 4K. So, yeah. Isn't that always fun? I mean, as a creator, it's – it's. I, I, we could we could probably go on and talk about that stuff all day of creating something and then seeing it come to life. It's, it's yeah. so exciting to do, but – no, man, it's been extremely fun having you on today. It's always an enjoyable conversation. Um, hopefully, I, I think we're going to work a lot more together this Absolutely. year, this coming year. So um, you're going to likely do a game season at some point. That'll be fun. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'll be appearing with you. But, of course, you always got the recaps basically directly right after game seasons are over. Uh, NY recaps time pops right in. Yeah, so, we'll figure out a way to, to tie those th- two things together. I, yeah, I know I, I, I always recommend you guys as like the best watch parties around because I mean yeah. it's like watching with like your buddies. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't want to watch on the Yes app. I want I want to put it on. I want to yeah. put it on YouTube and, and 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 watch and watch you know with you guys. So you want to watch me go watch me go crazy, rip my hair out, so nobody else has yeah. to. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I finally got my voice back, so I'm happy to have my voice actually feeling strong again after all those damn games. But I'll be seeing Michael K very soon. I'm gonna let him know. I'm gonna say, hey, Michael, look, I got a great respect for you. Calling games is not easy. You do difficult. a hell of a job. You do a hell of a job. So it's, it's difficult, man. It is very difficult. So guys, with what? that being good. I was gonna say twenty minutes. Twenty minutes a day live stream is tough. I have no idea how you do three, four hours every day. Me either. Me either. I, <laughs> I have no clue, but I do it. I'll keep doing it, 
and we'll keep growing and building uh hopefully you know together together as as a, as an entire uh, as an entire thing for Yankee coverage is really fun so guys you already know with that being said we will never come whack on a designated spitters track until <laughs> next time everybody adios before it hits the